Hello everyone. Welcome to Informatica Global Customer Support. My name is Rahul Kumar Tiwari and today as part of this video KB, we would be talking about SDLC which is nothing but code migration in MDM SAS. We'll talk about the agenda that we are going to cover as part of this video KB. So we'll start with introduction as in what it as SDLC is, what are the prerequisites to perform the same, what are the guidelines that needs to be followed while performing the SDLC. We'll also talk about something called as dependent assets and then we'll end this up with a demo. So as part of introduction, we would discuss what SDLC or code migration is. So in SAS, whenever we create certain assets, apart from the out of the box assets or we enhance out of the box assets, we have an option to promote those changes from one org to another org. So to perform the same, what we need to do is we need to export the assets from the org in which we have created them. And we need to import the same in the target org in which we want to promote it. And this process is what is called as SDLC or code migration. So we have an option to export a single asset a single entity say uh, if you have created one or a group of assets say multiple entities that you have created or you can export all the assets that are available as part of a project here are certain prerequisites uh, that needs to be taken care of before we perform the SDLC the first and the foremost is the source and target org should be on same version and should be using the same application license there's a certain level of privileges that are required uh, for the user with which we are trying to do this. And it should either be an administrator or a combination of designer and MDM designer roles. Uh, we should also have the required permission to migrate the assets and folder from the source to the target org. And as a general uh, use case, uh, we suggest to maintain a backup of your existing assets before, promote, before performing SDLC so that in case something goes wrong, you can always fall back on that backup. One important thing to observe is uh, when you do this SDLC or code migration, we need to be sure that in target environment, uh, the connections um, as part of the CDI mappings and mapping task and task flow should be created and they should be pointed to the uh, correct uh, endpoint. Few guidelines that we need to keep in mind. So to import and export the asset type, such as authorization configuration, we need to have administrative privileges. Once we migrate an asset, if we update an asset in source organization, uh, we should, or rather I say, we must export and import the modified asset to the target organization. And we should be ensuring that we have not made any other changes in the asset uh, that is already present in the target organization. Uh, the user role that have updated the assets in the source organization should be the one to perform the SDLC or the code migration. For example, if MDM designer updates an asset in your source organization, then MDM designer should be the role with which you need to migrate that asset to the target organization. Otherwise, the migration will fail. Uh, when you migrate reference data as part of your, uh, or uh, when you migrate your RDS from your B360 control, only the RDA metadata gets promoted. The code values are not promoted. Uh, we cannot delete RDAs that are created in Business 360 console from your R360. Uh, once you migrate the RDA between organization, uh, it is suggested not, not to modify the name of the RDAs in the source organization because if you have done that and you try to do the migration again, instead of updating the same asset in the target it will create a new asset here are a few of the assets that you can export and import um, they are straightforward authorization configuration predefined and custom source systems predefined business entity business events custom 360 business application with custom pages reference data asset crosswalks enterprise and custom code list uh, Thing to observe is we are talking only about the metadata here the actual data would not get promoted hierarchies and relationship job definitions such as match and merge generate merge task and recover a failed job rule specifications such as advanced data quality rule custom and predefined reports a report set that contains a collection of custom and predefined reports 
mapping mapping task task flow caveat is that we should have the connections in place pointing to the correct endpoint custom business entity uh, which includes custom fields fields groups smart fields match rule basic and advanced data quality rules or dash rules survivorship and such configuration now there are certain types which we cannot perform export and import for and these are ingress and egress job definition processes code values in reference data set and job schedules okay so we will talk a bit about dependent asset as well before moving on to demo and what actually dependent assets are. So at the definition stage, it's a one line step, uh, definition. Dependent assets or objects are assets that other assets require. For example, if I have a business entity, a custom business entity created in my org and I have and I have tied it up with a, and I'm trying to import data into that business entity through a custom source that I've created. So that custom source becomes a dependent object for me if I want to promote uh, my custom asset to the target org. So the rule is either the custom source should be present in the target org or while doing an export for the custom asset that I have created, I should select the dependent objects and as part of that selection, I should take the export of the source and then while doing import that will get imported. When we do import, we have an option to select what or what not I want to import, uh, whether I want to go ahead and import the existing object so that it overrides it or if it is not there, it should create it. And that's what it talks about here. When you set up an export, you can include exclude dependent objects in the export file. Uh, the dependent objects, but must uh, either present in the export file or in the target organization, else the import will fail. You can include dependent asset if they do not exist in target organization. Also, you can include dependent asset if you want to replace the dependent asset in the target organization with the updated versions from the source organization. Okay. Now let's uh, go to demo. So here I am in my org and I have logged into my B360 console. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to go to explore and in explore, suppose I want to export only a particular asset. For example, I want to export only a certain business entity. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly filter based on my asset type. So I'll take type, I'll take business entity. Okay, now suppose I want to export this. So I have an option to select one, multiple, or the entire folder. Whatever we select, you see, we will see an option over here. We have to click on this, and then we'll see an option of export. When you click on export, what happens is, it talks about whether or not you want to include all dependencies for this asset. For example, right now it shows for these two assets, it has secret dependencies. Now, if I remove them, I'll see the number has come down to two. That means I'm only exporting my person and organization business entity and not all its dependent assets. But if I'm not doing it, I have to make sure that all the dependent assets are already present in my target. Talk. Otherwise, this will fail while importing. So it's always advisable to export with all the dependency. And then at the time of import, we can select what or what not we want to import as part of my migration. So as soon as you click on export, we will see a jobs will start get executed as part of my export tab over here, which you can check. Okay, so once you click on refresh after a while, the job will uh, show its status right now it's exported successfully and then you will see uh, you have to when you click on this download you will get an option to save the export so what i'll do is i'll save it uh, in my bs just for the reference 
and then once it is saved how do we import it so what we have to do is we have to go and log into my target op so for the timing i'll be using same op to demonstrate the import as well so for import what we have to do is we have to again go to explore this time instead of selecting and clicking on export we see an option over here import so when you click on import it asks you to choose the file so we'll choose the file uh, that we have exported so this is the one which we have and when you select this it will show us all the asset that we have exported over here so now over here we have got two options it talks about overwrite existing assets excluding connections and runtime environment that means if i select it if an asset is already present it will overwrite it if i don't select it it's quite understandable it will uh, just use the target uh, one it does it would not overwrite it over here i have an option uh, to select what type of suppose i have exported with all dependency but i know that okay this source system is already there and i don't want to import it so i have this options to uh, remove it from over here and then uh, once done uh, you just have to click on test this would be a, just a sample run or a trial run to see uh, whether or not all the dependencies for the assets are in place and if those are in place it will show test successful and then you can go ahead and click on import so when you click on import again a job will get executed and that job will be uh, again as part of your my import export job this time it will be an import and you see it will show the import completed successfully so that's a short demo on how to perform this sdlc hope you find the video useful just uh, another point to add when you import an existing business entity with a different search configuration for example you created one custom asset in your target org uh, and then which was having a different set of searchable fields and then you added another custom field uh, in your source org which you promoted and it was searchable a, re a re index job is automatically created in the b360 folder of the target organization and then re index job uh, re indexes the business entity records have that means if you import the business entity again with a different search configuration a re-index job instant based on previously created re-index job index uh, will reflect the search configuration changes okay so this is an additional info hope you find this video can be useful